What's up everybody, my name is René Wengelewski and today we're going to talk about the very transmission from Fendt. Before we dive into TMS and all the other things, I thought it somehow makes sense to go at first into the structure and operation of the valve transmission. So what happens when I operate the joystick, how does the stepless acceleration work and so on. The whole thing is anything but new because Fenn was already experimenting with the stepless transmissions in the 1960s and presented a very transmission to the public for the first time in 1995. But what is so special about the transmission? Well, primarily that it's power split. So it means that the power from the engine is split between hydraulic and mechanical drivetrain. And so the advantages of both designs can be combined. On the one hand, we have the good efficiency from the mechanical part, so the ratio of energy expanded to energy use. And on the other hand, the possibility of stepless driving through the hydraulic part. And with this we can accelerate continuously without having to shift any gears, groups or power shift stages. And accordingly we have a continuous power flow whereby the engine can always be kept in the optimum speed range. By the way, this principle is not only used by tractor manufacturers for their traction drive, but also by other manufacturers such as Grimmy for their potato harvesters. In the case of conventional trail harvesters, the drive is purely mechanical via the PDO, followed by any bells, chains and so on. On the new Evos, the so-called Vary drive can be installed as an option, whereby the front drive train is purely mechanical, so the cl uh, classic PDO shaft, and this mechanical drive fires the hydraulic system that drives the sieving belts. With this system, the speeds can be controlled and even reversed independently of the PDO speed. The same or similar principle also applies to our Vary tractors. But first, let's take a look at the structure of the transmission. Don't be scared, it looks a bit uh, wild at first glance, but we'll go through all the components step by step. At the top left we see a cylinder, which symbolizes the engine. So this is where the energy comes from that drives everything else. In addition to the motor, there is also a torsional damper, which, to put it simply, compensates for low peaks. The energy is then transferred to a planetary gear via the drive shaft. We will come back to the structure in a moment, but basically this is the heart of the very transmission because it combines the hydraulic and the mechanical drivetrain. So from there we basically have three directions in which the energy can be transmitted. Up to the hydraulic line, down to the mechanical and or straight on to the PDO. On the far right we have the PDO stub, so to speak, which comes out of the back of the tractor and in front of that there is a PDO clutch, which provides a frictional connection, and the PDO gearbox, which is used to set the various PDO speeds, so 540, 1000 and so on. If we go up from the planetary gear we have a transmission gear, coupled with a hydro or oil pump. This pump is an axial piston pump, meaning the further I swing the pump out, the more oil it delivers and the direction in which the pump is swung out influences the direction in which the oil flows, so the direction in which my downstream hydro oil motor rotates. This oil motor can also swing out again, but we'll come to uh, that in a moment. Next we see the so-called submission shaft. This shaft again combines the mechanical and the hydraulic power branch. This is followed by the drive range shifting, which we know in our cabin as drive range 1 and 2. Um, imagine it's like a derailleur on a bicycle, which increases the efficiency of the transmission. From there, a shaft goes to the differential of the rear axle and down to the drive of the front wheels, where there is of course also a gearbox and our all-wheel clutch. But how do we get this tractor moving now or what happens when I operate the joystick? So at the beginning of course we need to start our engine and now is also the time to take a closer look at the planetary gearbox because as you can see the drive shaft, transmission gearbox and hydraulic pump are turning while all the other shafts and gears are standing still. This is because the planetary gear is constructed as follow. A kind of triangular plate is welded to the end of the input shaft. The whole thing is called a planet carrier. At each of the three corners of this planet carrier, in turn there is a smaller gear wheel, the so-called planet wheels. The planet gears are toothed with a sun gear on the inside and with a hollow ring gear on the outside. This means that they transmit the power coming from the drive shaft either via the sun gear or the ring gear depending on where the least resistance is. The power would be transmitted to the mechanical drivetrain via the sun gear and to the hydraulic drivetrain via the ring gear. 
if we are now standing still, the transmission is in neutral and all the power from the motor goes to the hydraulic train. The planet carrier thus drives the ring gear via the small planet wheels, which in turn cause the hydraulic pump to rotate via the transmission gear. However, since the pump is not swung out, the pistons inside this pump do not make a stroke and no oil is pumped. Of course, since little energy is needed to simply turn this pump, all the power goes there and not through the mechanical part to the wheels of the tractor. However, if we now move the joystick forward once, the swing angle of the pump is changed. You can see that the entire transmission is controlled electronically via the joystick. So, when the swing angle of the pump increases, there's also a certain piston stroke within the pump, which generates a corresponding oil delivery. You have a suction side where the pistons protrude further and a pressure side where the pistons go further in. This now conveys oil to the hydraulic motor, which finally moves the submission shaft, sun gear and finally the wheels of the tractor, of course. By further tapping the joystick forward, the pump is swung out to the maximum delivery volume at 45 degrees so that the speed increases and the tractor accelerates accordingly. At this point, however, the maximum top speed of the tractor has not yet been reached. If, for example, we now accelerate even further during road travel, the hydraulic pump stops at its maximum swivel angle, but the hydraulic motor is swiveled back to a maximum zero degrees. This means that the hydraulic motor no longer takes up oil, the hydraulic pump and the ring gear in the planetary gearbox are blocked and the power of the motor is transmitted completely to the wheels via the sun gear. From this point on, so only at maximum driving speed, we have a purely mechanical transmission of power from the motor to the wheels. Before that, there is still a hydraulic component, respectively a, a, a certain mixture of both and only when we are driving at full throttle, we drive purely mechanically. Of course, with all the acceleration, the engine speed must always be adjusted with the acceleration pedal or TMS, but I think that goes without saying. If I want to reduce the speed, the whole thing works exactly the other way around, step by step. If you now want to drive the tractor backwards, the whole difference is that the oil pump rotates the other way around when uh, you move the joystick backwards. The swivel angle therefore goes exactly in the opposite direction whereby the pressure and suction sides are swapped. Piston stroke, delivery rate and mode of operation are therefore theoretically the same in both directions. The whole thing is done purely electrically by means of an adjustment disc. In summary, the engine drives a hydraulic pump which when swung out drives a hydraulic motor that makes the tractor move more or less hydraulically. And the further I swing the pump, the more oil is pumped. As soon as the maximum swing angle of the pump is reached, the motor is swung back until the maximum driving speed has been reached and the tractor is, drive, uh, is driven purely mechanically. The cool thing is that it is almost completely wear free, even when the, what it's called, um, change of direction is operated. And this despite the fact that reversing the direction of travel is possible on a full load. There are of course countless other advantages. We have no interruption of tractive force uh, due to gear changes, continuous transmission of torque, we can set the PDO speed independently of the driving speed and of course we can always run the engine at the optimum operation point. By the way, I have the highest efficiency in travel range 1 at about 8 km per hour, so the normal travel speed for heavy arable work such as plowing. In travel range 2, at about 12 to 14 km per hour. We would have the speed for transport work when it goes up steeply uh, on hill. Technically, a maximum speed of up to 70 km per hour uh, could actually be achieved with the transmission, but the engine speed is rather kept lower in order to achieve a more economical driving style. Which brings us to the new 900s and 1000s with their low RPM concepts. By the way, the whole thing works in a similar way, but there is now the Varial Drive. The same name as on the Grimmer, but with a different meaning. Here Varial Drive means that there is a second hydraulic motor for the front axle and both are fed by the familiar hydraulic pump. The special feature, I have a variable all-wheel drive due to the independent drive of the axles. As a result, the button for the all-wheel clutch in the armrest is no longer needed in the series, as you might notice. Yeah, the front axle's hydraulic motor, like that of the rear axle, is first swung out completely. As the driving speed increases up to about 25 km per hour, it swings back to the zero position and is decoupled above 25 km per hour. 
After that only the hydraulic motor of the rear axle is available which as we already know moves to the zero position in sections up to the maximum speed. And from then on we are once again driving purely mechanically. Thanks to this second hydraulic motor for the front axle we now also no longer have a fixed ratio of forerun when all wheel drive is activated unlike the previous models. So when we drive around the bend the front wheels naturally turn faster than the rear wheels. And because the oil from the hydraulic pump can now be distributed evenly to both hydraulic motors the front wheels can also reach higher speeds. As a result the tractor is actively pulled into the turn which according to Fendt can reduce the turning cycle by up to 10%. By the way this is called a pull in turn. On top of that there is also an intelligent all wheel drive clutch the so called Fendt torque distribution. This clutch detects when the front or rear wheels are slipping and automatically transfers torque to the other axle which is not slipping to ensure permanent traction. As mentioned the whole thing works up to 25 km per hour and above that the front hydraulic motor is decoupled to avoid drag losses and such. So as you can see the development is actually still going on and even though so much technology can of course always break down it brings enormous added value forth both from a business point of view and from a comfort point of view. In the next video we will talk about how to drive such a tractor with value transmission especially when TMS also comes into play. But I hope I was able to give you a rough overview and an understanding of what happens under your seat when you operate the joystick. Hit the like button if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel to never miss another one and otherwise I will see you again in the next video. Take care, bye bye.